All right, viewers, here we are with my 2019 WRX Performance Pack. I've got right at, I believe, 566 miles on the car. Uh, went a little over what I would like to have done, but we're going to go ahead and do our first oil change. I know some of you are probably asking, why are you changing the oil at 566 miles? But Subaru recommends that the first oil change be done at 6,000 miles and then 6,000 miles from there in after. But with this being a brand new car and a brand new engine, like most typical new engines and break-in procedure, uh, normally when you have a new engine, you want to get it up to temperature the first time, uh, then stop it, drain the oil, replace the oil and filter. You want to uh, run the oil uh, again for about 100 miles, drain and refill, 500 miles, drain and refill, 1,000, 1,500, 3,000, 5,000, then after 5,000 miles, if you want to switch to synthetic oil, you switch to synthetic oil, but you want to do your break-in normally on conventional oil. I ran around in circle after circle with Subaru trying to figure out what oil is in this car. I asked my local dealership, they told me it was regular Subaru uh, Itamitsu 5W30 synthetic. Uh, I couldn't believe that they were breaking in new engines on synthetic engine oil, but I called Super America's customer service, asked them, and they told me the same thing. And they didn't quite understand my request, I don't think. Uh, I then emailed the service representative that got in hold with that got a hold of me and said, "Look, I'm looking for the factory feel." from Gunma Japan, where the car is manufactured. I want to know what is put in the crankcase on the brand new engine. And they told me 5W30 synthetic, which as far as I know and have always been told that you cannot break in a new engine with synthetic engine oil. It has to be conventional oil, especially one formulated for engine break-in, which has the ZDP in it, which is a high zinc, high phosphorus. It helps with the bedding in and mating surface and getting the initial wear patterns on like new bearings in the crank and the rods, rod bearings, uh, piston rings and the bore, all that stuff helps everything break in nice and even and uh, get good wear patterns and you know seal up really well. Well, from further research, I found out that the way that they break in new engines, most manufacturers now, they assemble the engine, they put a break-in oil in it, uh, run it on a dyno at wide open throttle for seven to 15 minutes, stop the engine, drain that oil out, now they throw the synthetic oil in it, and then ship the engine to the car plant to be put in the car from the engine manufacturing plant. So, not the greatest break-in procedure, but if that's how the manufacturers want to do it, then that's how they're going to do it. So, from everything I found out, everyone I've asked, they say, yep, it's 5W30 synthetic in it. So, I've got a case of Subaru certified synthetic 5W30 from my local Subaru dealership. I have a brand new black Tokyo Roki Subaru WRX oil filter, luckily, the USDM WRXs are now using the black made in Japan filters. Have a new crush washer. We're gonna get into this, go ahead and do the first oil change. Probably gonna change it again at 1500, 3000, 5000, and then from there on out, I'll have a 5000 mile interval. Like I said, this, is all, this will be all tentative on how long I own the car. Uh, real quick, as some of you seen or saw on Instagram, uh, Facebook and on the community post on YouTube. I am trying to sell the car already. Uh, there will be another video on that. Uh, no, it's not I can't afford the car. Uh, no, it's not I'm in a financial burden because of all the Subarus I buy. And uh, let's see, what was another top thing? No, I don't have Ringland failure. No, I don't have blown head gaskets for all you trolls in the comments. Uh, it's something different. We'll get into that in another video. Uh, I've had some stuff going on in my personal life in the last two months that really had me super stressed out, and that's why uploads haven't been of the greatest quality or quantity. So hopefully we can get that back on track and uh, get things back going in the right direction. So uh, 
I think that's enough blabbering and you looking at the front of the car. So we'll go ahead and get into this oil change. As we see here, we got our case of certified synthetic engine oil 530 from Subaru, which is the rebranded oil from Edimitsu. I'm pretty sure I pronounced it right this time. I know you guys will let me know if I didn't in the comments. Sorry, I know the last video I was talking about it. I didn't have the word in front of my head, in front of my face, and I was trying to go off of memory. But, uh, yep, so here's our new crush washer. If it'll focus. And the new oil filter. Note on these, we do have an oil cooler, which sits between the uh, timing cover and the oil filter. Uh, curious to see if my AST Subaru oil fill funnel will work on the newer F-Series engine oil fill. Oh, another quick thing, guys. Uh, it has been unbearably hot in South Carolina this summer. Uh, it's normally really hot and humid anyway, and I'm used to it, and I love summer. I can't stand winter or cold weather whatsoever. But this summer has been just absolutely horrible humidity-wise, and it has killed my motivation to go outside and film and do anything. I mean, it's kind of hard to do when you step outside and you've been outside for all of 10 seconds and you're already just pouring sweat. I mean, like literally so much sweat that you have to, you can't even see, you have to constantly wipe your forehead cause the sweat's going in your eyes and hot diggity that actually screwed right in there. So that's a great thing. My AST oil fill funnel for Subaru does work on F-Series engines. So score on that. Uh, I'll leave in the, I'll leave a link for this, uh, funnel from my Amazon store, uh, in case you're curious, but, uh, it's a great product. Love it. So we've got our oil cap off, got our funnel installed. Now we go underneath, drain the oil, put the new crush washer on, put the plug on, and then change the filter up top. Kind of neat about the newer Subarus that the filter's up top. Uh, I like and dislike it. I like it one for the fact that it's easy to access, it's up top. You don't have to, uh, guys that had the late model uh, EJ253s know what we called the cage of death, uh, where the exhaust manifold actually wraps around the front of the engine instead of going straight back like it used to and wraps around the oil filter. And uh, to change the oil filter on those cars is like playing a game of operation. You're reaching up in there to grab it, trying not to touch the sides and get scalded by the exhaust manifold. Then uh, oil, of course, hot oil runs down the filter as you're trying to unscrew it. It pours all over the exhaust manifold. It's hard to get it cleaned off. Once you get the car running, you get oil smoke and it's just a big mess. So this is nice that it's up top and we can just unscrew it, flip it off and uh, screw another one on. Uh, the thing I don't like about it is you can't pre-fill these oil filters now because you got to put them on upside down. So you got to worry about um, a dry start unless you do a flood clear crank to get the oil moving before you start it, or if you do, uh, you know, disable the system. I'm not sure if Subarus have clear, fl clear flood mode. I'm pretty sure most fuel injected vehicles do, but I've never been brave enough to try it on a Subaru because if a car doesn't have it and you try it, uh, real quick, clear flood mode on most cars that are fuel injected. If you put the accelerator pedal all the way to the floor, and I mean all the way to the floor, you can't have the floor mat in the way, all the way to the floor and try to crank it, it will disable the injectors and the uh, coils and you can crank the engine over without it starting. It's uh, called clear flood mode and uh, it's great for doing an oil change where you can crank the engine over and get the oil pump moving and get your oil pressure up so you don't have a dry start. Like I said, I don't know if Subarus have it or not. I've never actually done it on a Subaru. I've always just pulled the uh, fuel pump fuse or unplugged the coils or what have you when I'm uh, starting a rebuild or starting a uh, engine I've had out and completely drained the oil out of to do head gaskets or something like that. So need to do some digging in the service manual and see if there is actually a clear flood mode for the Subarus because that'd be nice to know. Oof. All right, guys, so this is actually my first time ever sticking my head under the newer WRX. Uh, this is pretty neat. Uh, there is a skid plate down here to protect the turbocharger, which I was wondering what was under here since the turbo now sits underneath the engine rather than 
back into the uh, right hand side of the engine bay and stamp right here it says DIT Forge Direct Injection Turbo so this looks I guess this is a forged piece of aluminum that this skid plate is made out of uh, apparently we don't have to remove any of this to do the oil change there is the slightest of cracks in here where we can see just the very bottom edge of the oil pan and the drain plug for the oil pan so I'm going to try not to remove this. Like I said, I don't think I have to. Um, in a, another video, we are going to put this car on the lift and uh, check out everything under here. One, because it's a shiny brand new Subaru and there's absolutely no rust or dirt or junk. Uh, nice to see. I don't know if this is part of the performance pack or if all newer WRXs have this now. It's the aluminum front lower control arms. I know back in like the GD chassis uh, WRX STIs, that the STI got the aluminum lower control arms while the WRX had steel stamped lower control arms, but not too sure on this new chassis if that is uh, just across the board they have the aluminum arms or if it's just for the STI and performance pack cars. So need to do some digging on that. Otherwise, everything basically looks box standard Subaru. Same stuff we've had for decades. Uh, same basic strut arrangement these have uh what they call them inverse struts or something i can't remember what the guy told me that the dealership salesman told me uh but basically same sway bar same uh, lower control arm uh, it is a little bit different uh it's more in tune with the newer cars with the bushing going up and down instead of the big fat bushing that used to bolt on at the back of the control arm so the control arm geometry is a little different uh way more wide open under the transmission front differential here. Uh, different, a little bit different uh, transmission uh, cross member, a little bit different engine cross member. Uh, can't tell too much under the skid plate in the front end, but I'm sure most of it is a pretty standard Subaru. I did look under the back of the car and looks like the rear suspension is completely different than the older uh, WRXs. Uh, we'll get, like I said, we'll get into that more in a later video when I put this car on the lift and we go front to back over everything uh, after I've had a little bit more time to research the differences and uh, what exactly all is new new for this car. And uh, that said, let's go ahead and get this oil draining. Uh, hopefully I can get the camera, the GoPro set up. We're in really tight quarters with the oil ramps because this car is low sitting. So see if we can get all this in here there we go uh and some of you might be asking again uh mr subaru what the hell are you <laughs> draining out 500 mile synthetic foil synthetic oil for and the short answer is this it is a new engine and part of new engine break-in is when you have all the new bearings and surfaces uh, getting their wear patterns and breaking in essentially to each other uh, that creates uh, God, what's the term for it? I think it's called scaff S-C-A-F-F -F, scaffing scaff might be wrong I'll put down here if I'm wrong <laughs> I'm going by memory uh, but basically it's lots of little metal shavings little tiny tiny metal shavings from the material from the friction of the new rings against the cylinder bores and the new bearings and all that well that metal circulates through your engine oil and it gets into everything and you don't want to keep that stuff in there long that's why traditionally with new engines you change the oil immediately after the first uh, full operational temperature cycle and then you do it 100 150 uh, 300 500 1000 1500 3000 5,000 miles because you want to keep putting fresh nice oil in there to help everything break in while also removing all of that scaffing and metal debris and get it out of the oil and keep it out of the oil from going around and causing more harm than good. So that's why we're changing this engine oil that only has 500 miles on it and this is going to be expensive because it's all synthetic but you know I'd rather spend a lot of money now on synthetic oil and wasting it i mean it's going to be recycled and have a very long lasting good well broken in engine rather than not doing it saving money being cheap on the synthetic oil not replacing the oil and doing a traditional break-in period and then uh, having an engine that didn't fully break in and has issues and oil consumption and all that stuff 
Not saying this will solve Subaru oil consumption. We're gonna monitor that on this car to see if this car does have an oil consumption issue. And uh, yep, so enough talking, time to drain this oil. Hopefully I don't give you guys a bath, and hopefully I haven't talked long enough for this oil to get cold. <laughs> Last I checked, it was 200 degrees. It's still pretty warm, and I made a mess. Did I get the GoPro? Nope, didn't get you guys. I got me though. I got me good. <laughs> Ooh, that's hot. <laughs> and this is why I wear gloves. So we're going to take this out and see if we see any glittery metal shavings in it uh, after we get this drained out. Also going to take the oil filter off and we're probably going to cut it open and see if we can see any evidence of the uh, metal fragments, the, that scaffing, scaping, whatever the term is, and uh, go from there. So I'm going to let this continue to drain out. I'll clean up my mess. And uh, throw a new crush washer on here, tighten that all up, and we'll go top side and refill. All right, guys, everything's cleaned up. Got the drain plug back in, new crush washer on, torque to spec. Good to go down here. Uh, now to go to top side, replace our filter, and refill. All right, let's pop our filter off. Hopefully, it's not gorilla tight. Yep, it seems a 200 pound gorilla put that on there. I don't know why people have to put oil filters on so tight. They're not going to fly away. There we go. All right, now it's time for 5.4 quarts of oil.
Ranjang Jerman All right, so now we'll start it up, uh, let it run a little while, cut it off, uh, make sure there's no leaks from the drain plug, uh, back it off the ramps, and uh, let it sit a couple minutes, let the oil have time to get back into the pan, check the level, and should be good to go. And that was the clear flood mode crank uh, to get the oil circulating through the pump into the new filter so we don't have a dry startup. Now that that's done, we'll go ahead and start the engine without the pedal fully depressed. And yes, Subarus, even the new 2019 WRX does have clear flood mode. And we start the engine up and the oil pressure light immediately goes out. So no dry start after the oil change. Uh, with that, we'll go and look around the car, uh, see if we have any oil leaks. Uh, we should not, of course, being a new car. And uh, we will back it off of the oil ramps, let it run about a minute, two minutes, cut it off, let it sit a couple minutes for the oil to have time to drain back into the oil pan and check the level and we will be good to go. I'm not sure if this car has any kind of uh, service light or any way to keep track of oil changes. I'm gonna look through the manual real quick to see if it does. We'll come back and go over the reset procedure for oil change, uh, interval light service maintenance, so. So just pop my head underneath. Of course, no leaks from the oil drain plug, new crush washer on it and torque spec, so no leaks, have no leaks visible around our oil filter. So with that, we're gonna back it off the ramps, shut it down, and uh, check our oil level. All right, got our oil filter off of the WRX in the oil filter cutter. Let's get this booger open and uh, see if there's anything interesting to see inside. All right, cut. Okay. Let's see if we got any shimmery shinies in here. So as normal, and you'd expect with the Tokyo Roki filter, nice heavy steel top plate, nice hole, big side, nice diameter holes for good oil flow. We got our silicone anti-drain back valve. And we have our filter element with our steel end caps. Uh, not really seeing any shimmery shinies on here. At the bottom of the filter, oh, there we go. We do have that gray material there that is the um, metal shavings. I don't know if it's coming from the camera, but there is a little sparkle in it. So that is the breaking in of this brand new engine. As you see, all caught here in the bottom near the uh, bypass valve. Let's go down here. Yep, you can see maybe since the sun just hit, you may be able to tell the shimmery little metal bits in the bottom of the can in that oil that's left. So we do have some metal shavings in there, which is typical. It's not actually shavings, let me rephrase that. It's not shavings, it's uh, small particulates, uh, small 
metallic particulates that you can see. That is from the, like I said, the braking of the new engine. So uh, nothing abnormal here. Uh, no big metal chunks, no big shavings, just the normal uh, little glittery bits and a little bit of a gray schmoo. Uh, <laughs> kind of what you get on your drain plug for your differentials when you change those. It's just the combination of very fine uh, metal particulates from friction breakdown. So nothing abnormal here. Uh, looks like the engine's breaking in as it should. All right, so car has been sitting a few minutes. Oil's had time to drain back into the oil pan. Let's go ahead and check our oil fill level real quick and adjust accordingly. Just a hair off from the top full line. I'll let it sit another minute or so just before I uh, go to top off any more than that. Uh, just to make absolute sure that uh, all the oil has had time to drain back down into the oil pan. All right, we're right there at the full mark. I don't know if I'm pointing at the camera or not. But right there, topped up, we are good to go. All right, said, we'll move inside and go through resetting the oil and maintenance light. All right, guys, excuse the shaky cam. I'm trying to do this handheld. It's not really easy to get the uh, tripod in here. So what we're gonna do is go in our settings menu and uh, maintenance, engine oil, and uh, do, 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 do. Let's see, maintenance, engine oil. That's not right. Let's see. We're gonna change it again at 1,000 miles. So we got, I guess we'll set it at 1,000 miles because it won't go down to 500. So set that, setting complete. So oil filter, go down and set that also to 1,000 because we can't set it to 500. We might just go to 1,500 on this next oil change. And do. And yep. Yeah. All right, we're good to go now. All right, guys. Sorry for the audio on this. I'm recording with my phone and the screen recorder. But real quick, for warranty purposes, since I do my own services, and for any of you that have a new Subaru and want to do your own services, uh, go into your My Subaru account. Go to select your vehicle. Go to service. And let's see, that's not it, hang on. Um, vehicle status, no, hang on. Do, 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 service, uh, enter service, there we go, sorry. Service provider name. Do, 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 do. your name, selected mileage interval, will not let me select 500 miles, we're not going to select the mileage interval, date is today, which is August 25th, mileage is 566, notes, oil, and filter change, Subaru 5W. 30, sin, whoop, synthetic, and save. Cannot end with a space, oh, and save. Your server sentry has been added. There we go. 
Sound. I cannot see it. Nope. Nope. Uh, service. Service schedule reminder. Service history. And here we go. Service history on my WRX performance pack. 566 miles service. Completed August 25th by me. And it was an oil and filter change with Subaru 5W30 synthetic. So now we have a record in my, my Subaru account for the services. And that will keep us in line with our warranty for the services we perform ourselves that aren't performed by the dealership. So wanted to throw that in real quick for you. So that will do it. Sorry, I'm super sweaty. It's super hot out here still. It was nice this morning. It's 80 degrees right now, but it feels like about 120 because of the humidity. So with that said, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one.